While InDesign has many tools to perform a wide array of tasks, what I'm going to do is show you the primary tools that you'll first interact with. On the left hand side, you'll find the Tools panel, and by default, the Tools panel is displayed in a single column view. This is great if you're concerned about screen real estate, but if you wish to expand it to a two column view, all you have to do is click the double arrow in the top left hand corner. And it acts as a toggle, so if you click it again, the panel will be restored to its default single column view. What's great about the tools inside of this panel is that they each have a keyboard shortcut. And if you hover over a particular tool, a tooltip will appear giving you the name of the tool and its corresponding keyboard shortcut. So, for example, if I press the T key on the keyboard, I'll activate the type tool. If I press the V key on the keyboard, I'll activate the selection tool. With the selection tool active, if I come over and click on this image, I'm going to select the frame that contains that image. And you'll notice with the frame selected, I have a series of resize handles giving me the ability to increase the size of the frame or decrease the size of the frame. If you decrease the size of the frame, you'll notice in this case, I'll be cropping off a portion of that image. You also have the ability to rotate the frame by placing your cursor outside of one of the corners of the frame. If you click and drag, you'll rotate it. In this video, you'll learn how to specify the desired number of pages as you create a new file and how to add pages to and remove pages from an existing project. With the latest version of InDesign CC open, choose File, New, Document. This will display the New Document dialog box. Yours may look different than what you see here, and that's okay. We want to create a four-page flyer that will be printed, so choose Print. This configures things correctly for a typical print document, such as the color model, default measurements, and document presets. Then choose Letter for the preset page size. Note that there are a number of preset page sizes to choose from, as well as a number of templates that you could use as a starting point for your design. Also, deselect the Facing Pages option. Selecting this option displays left-hand pages next to right-hand pages, similar to the interior layout of a magazine. That's not what we want to do in this instance, so we're deselecting this option. Notice that right here, InDesign is asking me for the number of pages I'll have in my document. Now, don't get too hung up on this, because depending on what you're creating, you may or may not know how many pages will be in your project. If you're creating a postcard, you'll probably have two pages, one for the front of the All text, illustrations, and images exist inside of a frame within InDesign. The first thing that I'm going to do is show you how you can create a text frame. I'm going to press the T key on the keyboard to activate the type tool. You'll notice that the cursor changes to an I beam. All I have to do is click and drag to define the text frame. After doing that, I can come up to the type menu and from the type menu, I can choose fill with placeholder text. Now what I want to do is place an image within the document. It's really important not to have a frame selected. So I'm going to press the escape key on the keyboard to activate the selection tool. Now I'm going to click away from this frame to deselect it. Now we can come up to the file menu and from the file menu you can choose place. Command D or Control D is the keyboard shortcut. Select an image and click open. When you do that you'll notice that your cursor changes. It indicates that you have a graphic loaded. If you click once the image will be brought in at 100%. If you prefer to define the size of the frame you can do that as well. I'll go ahead and undo this, Command Z or Control Z. Then I'll simply click and drag again, and this will define the size of the frame. Of course, you can always resize the frame. You can use any one of these resize handles. You can make it larger. Guides in InDesign make creating pages easier, faster, and more accurate. In this tutorial, we'll learn about margins and column guides. With InDesign CC open, open this practice file from the downloadable practice files for this tutorial to follow along. If your Pages panel isn't visible on the screen, choose Window, Pages. In the Pages panel, you can see that this is a three-page file. To turn to page two and display it in the document window, double-click on the page two thumbnail. When you create a new document, you have the opportunity to specify any margin and column guides that you want 
and then these guides appear on all the pages of the document. This page has half-inch margins, as indicated by these magenta lines. But the text frames are just sitting in the middle of the page, without any relationship to the margin guides. Whoever created this document just specified one column with half-inch margins, which for this design isn't useful. Double-click the Page 3 thumbnail, and you'll see that the Page 3 layout is similar. But again, no guides are in place to help position the text frames. If you are going to create more pages with additional content, Master pages are really helpful for creating consistency throughout a document for things like page headers, footers, and other repetitive page elements. In this tutorial, we'll learn how to create and modify master pages and how to apply master pages to document pages. With InDesign CC open, open this file from the downloadable practice files for this tutorial to follow along. To see thumbnails of the pages in this document, you can use the Pages panel. If your Pages panel isn't visible, choose Window Pages to display the panel. You can see that the Pages panel is divided into a top section and bottom section by this horizontal line. Pages above this line are Master Pages, and pages below the line are Document Pages. Every new document that you create from scratch always has one Master Page called A Master, and that Master is automatically applied to all of the Document Pages. The little A displayed on each of these document page thumbnails indicates that master page A is applied to that document page. In other words, content we put on the A master page will automatically appear on those document pages. When you create a new document, you specify what page size to use. But sometimes you might need to change the page size after you've begun work on a file. In this video, you'll learn how to change the page size of all the pages in an existing document or individual pages. If you want to follow along, open this file from the practice files for this tutorial. Initially, InDesign displays page 1 in the document window. To see all the pages in this file, you can use the Pages panel. If the Pages panel isn't visible on your screen, choose Window, Pages. And in the Pages panel, you'll see a thumbnail for each page in the document. This is a two-page design for a postcard, front and back. In order to see what size the pages are, you can open the Document Setup dialog box. To do this, choose File, Document Setup. You can see that this is a 6-inch by 4-inch document. After designing this postcard, we realized that we really need it to be 8 by 6 inches. We can easily change the page size of all the pages in a document in this Document Setup dialog box. Change the width to 8 inches and the height to 6 inches. In this tutorial, you'll use Adobe InDesign to set up a document for a modern magazine layout, starting from scratch, using margins, columns, and more. So let's get started. To start a new document, choose File, New, Document. In this case, this project will be a printed magazine, but later it could be adjusted to work as a digital layout as well. So choose Print to set the proper settings right away. Then to see more layout sizes, click View All Presets. Magazine layouts come in different sizes, but for this example, choose A4. Now to set some layout settings, start by changing the name over here to Magazine. Then set the units to inches or whatever you prefer. We'll be jumping right into designing a spread, so change this number of pages to three so we have some pages to start with. Bleed guides should definitely be set to accommodate for content printing to the edge of the pages. So click Bleed and Slug and set the bleed to the typical 0.125. There. Click Create to get started. InDesign gives you an easy way to get started on a project. Just choose one of the preset sizes from the start screen. I'm creating a flyer to US letter size, so I'll choose that option. And InDesign generates a new blank document and it's ready for me to start creating my flyer.
The black line represents the edge of the page. The magenta line actually goes all the way around and it represents the margin setting of one half inch. The purple vertical guides are column guides. Now in InDesign, unlike Word, the margin is just a visual guide. It's not a container. That means that you can place text or graphics outside the margin. By default, InDesign uses the PICA measurement system, which is commonly used in newspaper and magazine production. But if you're more comfortable working in inches, just put your cursor in the small box where the rulers intersect, then right-click and choose Inches from the Context menu. InDesign is a container-based program. That means that text lives in text frames and graphics and photos live in graphics frames. To make a frame for an image, I'll just choose the Rectangle Frame tool, that's the one with the X through it, and then I'll just click and drag and create a frame that snaps to my margin guides. There are thousands of images that are available on Adobe Stock, so that's a great place to find a compelling image for my service. I want to add some text that describes our one-day shipping offer. I could type the text, but luckily my colleague has provided it in a text file. So I'll just choose File, Place, find the file on my hard drive, double-click it, and back in InDesign, I'll just click and drag to create a text frame. InDesign can also import Word files, and you can copy text from another source, such as an email, and paste it into an existing text frame. Now I could just manually format all of this text, but our design team will be creating a series of flyers so it's worth making paragraph and character styles that we can use in multiple documents. Styles are just recipes for text formatting, and they're very easy to create. Our company style guide specifies the Open Sans font, which I've already synced from Typekit. So I'll switch to my Type tool, click in my text frame, and then click and drag to select some of my text. Up in the control panel, I'll click my font name pull down, and because I have so many fonts active on my system, I want to make it easier to find that Open Sans font. I can filter by clicking this little TK at the left so that I only see my Typekit fonts. And there it is, Open Sans. InDesign. QR codes have been an incredibly popular way to relay information to a user. With mobile devices and smartphones, a lot of those devices have apps that allow users to scan QR codes. QR codes, of course, stands for Quick Response Codes. And a great new feature inside of InDesign CC is having the ability to generate these QR codes directly within the application. Now, prior to CC, you would have to find a third party to generate the QR code, and then you would have to bring it into InDesign. Well, no more. You can do it all inside of InDesign. And what I'd like to do is replace the physical address and telephone number in web URL with a quick response code. So in order for us to do that, what I'd like you to do is select the text frame, and with it selected, press the delete or backspace key on your keyboard. To generate the QR code, all you have to do is come up to the object menu. And under the object menu, you can choose generate QR code. 